I have a commission from the Guthrie, and I'm starting on a new play. I'm in the studio where Thornton Wilder wrote Our Town, which is a beautiful thing, you know? Anytime I get stuck, I just think, well, Thornton Wilder wrote Our Town here. <laughs> you know, it can't be all bad. I thought that it was the most perfect studio I could imagine. Uh, it's very sweet. I sat down right away that afternoon to work, sort of feeling all of those people in the studio. I think the first name is from 1929 on the lists. Going to Peterborough, the town, people smile to you and they say hello, even though they don't know you. So they're really gentle. Odell, to me, is a kind of a gift of time and space, and in a more indirect way, a gift of personal freedom. You were given a chance to explore what you want and how you want it, and that's, I think, is really precious. It's interesting to me that there's such um, permission for experimentation in the arts inside such a careful structure of tradition and protection. It's a very, very protective environment here. When I'm here, I feel like I don't think about anything except the novel. I don't think about magazine articles, I don't think about television scripts, I don't think about screenplays. There's a feeling, I think, for me, with fiction that you sort of lower yourself down into the well. And this is just such a great well. I build puppets of recycled materials like plastic, and then I make them move. And I animate them uh, with this stop motion process. They are so real. They are not puppets pretending to be people or other things. They are puppets pretending to be puppets and acting like puppets. I had a specific plan, I had a specific project, so I came here and I put my things in a studio and, uh, and I thought, okay, from tomorrow I'm starting. And I went for dinner, and actually that dinner I met Sylvia and then we went to, to see her work and, and, and my work and, and suddenly actually, after the discussion, everything started to change. I love talking to the artists, I love what happens between the writers and the composers and the the visual artists, that tradition of conversation is exactly what sets artists free. You come to be with the work and to participate. Because writing is a, even though it can be lonely, it is a social act in the end. It's a conversation across centuries. The thing that really surprised me was uh, Blake. I've heard that they deliver lunches to your studio, and it immediately grabbed my imagination. It's like such a romantic uh, notion. And then I figure out it's Blake who is delivering it, and then I got to meet him and talk to him. In my mind, he's just such a wonderful person. He gives the impression of a, almost like an angel Gabriel kind of thing. It fits perfectly in my, in my imagination. A lot of the real work of the colony occurs around the supper table. You put an, uh, an architect next to a poet, next to a visual artist, uh, writer, composer. And by coming here, they often learn that they all have essentially the same process of producing art. It's really just unbelievably stimulating to be able to work on your stuff and then have these conversations at night. I'm learning so much because every single day there is someone new I'm talking to. And the whole world is opening because all of these people are very good artists. <laughs> it seems like deep friendships really form and really stay strong over years and years. I've heard about that and I can now understand how that happens. There's a kind of combination of solitude and intimacy. You come here with an idea and you start working on your idea and then you're given a gift by McDowell. All of a sudden, it's a new idea you hadn't thought of, or it's a new way of looking at a problem. There's something magical here at McDowell, and it certainly has happened for me. I suddenly, this afternoon, felt in a rush an understanding of what's coming next, what it is that I'm going to be working on. 
I had given myself a month to find that path, and I've been madly making notes through the early afternoon, thinking I'm onto it. I know just just where this is going to start. So it's very exciting, and I don't think that would have happened for me at home or, you know, in a hotel room on a vacation or something. It's something very special about this place. It's it's sort of a, a contained 450 acres of generations of inspiration and creative work. You tap into that. I'm Robert McNeil, and I've been the chairman of the McDowell Colony in Peterborough, New Hampshire, for 14 years now. And I'm very proud to be associated with this incredible American institution. It was founded in 1907 by Edward McDowell and his wife, Marion. And over the nearly 100 years since, we've given places to work for more than 6,000 artists. There are no more inspiring people to talk to than young, creative people. It's immensely rewarding to me to feel that I'm part of supporting them. I found a quote that Mrs. McDowell said that her purpose was to prevent the non-writing of a great poem. I think that's what this place does. Every day you're preventing the non-writing of your own, <laughs> your own work.